you're watching CBiz Media. All right, it's us again. It's sister to sister with my sis. Hi. Who are you? Self again. And I'm Irene. Yay. <laughs> I just being goofy. <laughs> All right, sis. So what are we going to talk about today? We're just going to have a nice little brief segment. Talk about some different things. So what's the topic, sis? How things are going on in our community. What type of things? Crazy things, right? Right. Well, there's a couple few stories that are somewhat recent. Um, one was a little bit farther back where the man uh, was went to into the restaurant and they didn't have some fried mushrooms or something. So he shot one of the people that were waiting in the lobby for their food. And it doesn't make any sense. I don't know why he shot the guy. I guess he couldn't have access to the people behind the glass. So he shot the person that was already out in the lobby that has nothing to do with his mushrooms. This sounds unreal to me. What do you think about that story? Yeah, it sounds unreal. It's crazy. Like, well, sis, what would you do if they didn't have your fried mushrooms? What would you do? Walk out. Thank you. Please, people, take that advice. Just leave. Sometimes when restaurants don't have certain things or whatever, I'll just go to another restaurant and get that. And I might not go back, but, I mean, that might be how I handle it, but never with any type of insane violence like that. All right. So, sis, did mushrooms become worth the price of gold now? No. <laughs> right. Okay, we have another story. And I, it's, it's my condolences and prayers to some of these families that are going through this. I'm not sure if the person died from this um, shooting or not. I don't know that information. We're going to go to the next story. Uh, it's a couple more stories. I'll just give them back to back. But this is all within our Detroit, Michigan area, I believe. Um, and for those that are watching outside of Michigan, yeah, that's where some of these things are happening. Um, I think it's two more stories. Yeah, one story more more recent is a clerk at a gas station shoots somebody in the chest because it looks like they're trying to steal a bag of chips. Or I don't know if it's just one bag of chips. Let's say they're just trying to steal some snacks out in the lobby of the gas station. Uh, whatever they were trying to steal, I don't think it's worth their life. Like, what do you think about this story? No. No what? It's not worth the lie. I know I would be upset that somebody was trying to steal from me, but I wouldn't take it to that far of a degree. I would probably have called the police. See, when people have guns, they have this extra empowering thing that they feel that they have. Like, well, I'll just grab my gun. I no need for the police anymore because I have my own gun. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So if somebody stole from you, what would you do? Not shoot them. <laughs> Not shoot them. Um... Well, we won't get too much into the point of firearms, but I want to give a shout out to Pastor Ovilla and Code 22. The 22nd of every month, look that up, um, hashtag Code 22, because it's a day of peace and healing for the city of Detroit. And I, it might even be for the state of Michigan, but it's a day to promote peace. And we really need that because... <laughs> We really need that because some of this is just senseless violence. Um, 
Do you have any more comments? It's crazy. And that's getting crazy. So why do you think people are doing this stuff? I don't think they have a life. You think something's missing? <laughs> Stop doing that. You think something's missing? God. Yeah, that's how I feel too. The last story is really sad. A minor fender bender turns into um the the person that that um accidentally hit the other person. They were beaten to death. And this is a minor fender bender. It wasn't like a major um accident from what the reports say. But even if it was, none of that is worth anybody's life. Can you just get his insurance information? Like, why do you have to resort to just going mad? Now, that to me as a deeper issue. I think this person was already had issues. They were already set off. Who knows what they were angry about before in the first place? Who knows their backstory but whatever was going on with them was like way deeper than this fender bender. Like they probably had some, oh, I know they had to have some deeper issues and who knows what they're going through in their life at this time for them just to go off to the point of beating someone to death. This is not even with a weapon. This is with their bare hands, just taking somebody's life. Now that's really brutal. What do you think? Yes. That's Brutal. So everybody's praying and send, sending their condolences out to the family of the young man who lost his life over this very small matter. And it just shows us that there's a lot of deep issues that we are not dealing with personally and in our society and our community. Sadly, you know, we as individuals, you don't know everything that somebody's going through. So what can we do as a community to try to prevent this or try to stop this from happening in the future? And I, that's really the big question of the day. So. Yeah. We have to get to the bottom of the. So right at this point, I'm going to ask my sister to pray for the condition of our community right now. Pray for everyone's personal and spiritual development, whatever they're going through. And just pray that God rests on our communities and that his influence can be seen through us so that we can be a positive example and hopefully turn some people's minds around they have like i think conflict re resolution classes and things like that maybe that's something that we need to invest in further as a community and make it some sort of requirement in some kind of way to get people to prevent this before just any of these crazy things just strike up you know and another issue is mental health. That's something else that we have to pray for as well. And just ask God to take control of these matters because it's beyond us. So my yeah. sis, she's going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless us in this time and take control of our life and bless the people who have struggled with these things and bless us to stay prayed up and stay spiritual and rooted and grounded in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer, sis. Um, again, we 
We ask God to just keep his hands of protection around us and show us how to navigate and show us how to treat one another because um, it seems like any little thing sets people off today. So it's like you don't know how to act. If you act in a reasonable way, somebody can still be set off. So we just pray God's hand of protection upon us all and his guidance and everything that we do. And yeah. thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Thank you. Goodbye. Roll your windows down, let your top drop It's like a house party, everybody on the block Okay. I make it real hard to ignore Cause you never heard this before It's okay Now your earbuds about to blow Giving you that boom bap so It's okay Show the whole world how to move Cause I ain't gotta follow your rules It's okay I'm on the mic dropping clues Until it's lights out and I'm through It's okay Yeah I write a lot, but I doubt a lot Second guess a lot of things I feel that's inside my heart Check the plot, cause my brain thinking out the box We are not the same, I'm transparent, but you hide a lot And I can tell you uncomfortable, but I am not Your words never seem to come together like writer's block Scribble my past on the notepad so I can watch What's behind me start reflecting where not the wall The real know what's real, that explains why you unfamiliar You can't adjust like a soldier trying to be civilian You switch faces like a different colors of chameleons Willing to forfeit Integrity to get a million. Yep. You willing to live a lie just to make a living. A you willing to show the world that you ain't willing to be yourself because you afraid of being painted different. Uh -huh. No specifics. If the shoe fits, wear it. Listen, I make it real hard to ignore because you never heard this before. It's okay. Now your earbuds about to blow, giving you that boom bap so. It's okay. Show the whole world how to move because I ain't gotta follow your rules. It's okay. I'm on the mic dropping clues Until it's lights out and I'm through It's okay
A lot of rappers boast that they independent They don't need a label cause no label got no interest in them That just make it easier to cope with criticism That they haven't made it to the point where they can make a living Off their lyricism that they spitting over instrumentals They just fall a victim to the mental trap the business give them And I struggle with it too, this ain't coincidental Feeling caged up like a pit locked inside a kennel No shortcuts and if you get a tour bus Watch out for them groupies better known as tour sluts They discount their worth, quick to give it up But listen up you don't want no role in that set of stood on many stages And I shook a lot of hands Guerrilla marketing, working hard Y'all don't understand Leaning on my faith for the upper hand Scorpion flow like I'm Drake This is God's plan I make it real hard to ignore Cause you never heard this before It's okay Now your earbuds about to blow Giving you that boom bap so It's okay Show the whole world how to move Cause I ain't gotta follow your rules It's okay I'm on the mic dropping clues until it's lights out and I'm through. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hey people, we hope you enjoyed the show. If you want to be a part, uh, submit your videos or anything, contact us. Go to cbiztv at yahoo.com or cbizmedia1 at gmail.com. Enjoy the show and thank you for watching. The Bible. It's one of the most influential books in human history. It explores the big questions of why we exist. It's inspired many people to do amazing things. And confused many others. And you've probably got one sitting around somewhere. So, what is the Bible actually? Well, the Bible is a small library of books that all emerged out of the history of the people of ancient Israel. And in one sense, they were just like any other ancient civilization. But among them were a long line of individuals called prophets. And they viewed Israel's story as anything but ordinary. They saw it as a central part of what God was doing for all humanity. And these prophets were literary geniuses. Really? Yeah, they expertly crafted the Hebrew language to write epic narratives, very sophisticated poetry. They were masters of metaphor and storytelling, and they leveraged all of this to explore life's most complicated questions about death and life and the human struggle. So there's a lot of different authors writing this book. Yeah, and these texts were produced over a thousand year period, starting with Israel's origins in Egypt, then leading up to their kingdom with their first temple. But eventually they were conquered by the Babylonians who took them away into exile. Then, at a crucial moment in their history, many Israelites returned to their land. They built a second temple, they reformed their identity, and this is when the Jewish scriptures began to be formed into the shape that we have them today. Okay, the Jewish Bible, what's in it? Well, in Hebrew, it's called by an acronym, Tanakh. The T stands for Torah, sometimes called the law. That's Israel's five book foundation story. The N stands for Nevi'im, the Hebrew word for prophets. And this section consists of the historical books that tell Israel's story from the prophet's point of view. Then you get the poetic books of the prophets themselves. The K stands for Ketavim, the Hebrew word for writings. This is a diverse collection of poetic books, wisdom books, and more narrative. And the Jewish people believe that through all of these literary works, God speaks to his people. Now, there were other Jewish writings being produced during this second temple period as well. Yeah, a really diverse group of texts. And these two were highly valued in Jewish communities. And there was debate from ancient times about whether or not some of these should be considered part of their scriptures. So this is a lot of different writings over a long period of time. Why did they put them all together like this? Well, altogether, these texts tell an epic story about how God is working through these people to bring order and beauty out of the chaos of our world. And it all builds up to a hope for a new leader who would come and renew all creation. And then the Tanakh concludes, and this leader never comes. So it's an expertly crafted work, but it's missing an ending? That's exactly right. Now, a few centuries later, a Jewish prophet comes onto the scene named Jesus of Nazareth. He claimed he was carrying the Tanakh story forward. 
Yeah, so Jesus did a bunch of cool stuff, was killed, but his followers claimed he was alive from the dead. Yeah, they said that Jesus was that long-awaited leader who would restore the world. And so his earliest followers, called apostles, they composed new literary works about the story of Jesus. They called these good news or the gospel. They formed an account called Acts about the spread of the Jesus movement outside of Israel. And then they circulated letters to different Jesus communities all around the ancient world. And they saw these writings as part of the scripture. Yeah, the apostles wrote all of this as the fulfillment of that epic story found in the Tanakh. And they were continuing the literary genius of the Jewish tradition. They also believed that God was speaking to his people through these texts alongside the scriptures of Israel. So that's the Old and New Testament. But what did the early Christians think of the other Second Temple literature? Well, different groups had different views about some of these books, but we know they read them and valued these texts because they passed them along with the Jewish scriptures. Okay, so we've got the Tanakh, the Jewish scriptures. We've got these other Second Temple period works. Then the writing of the apostles about Jesus. And that's a lot of literature, so what's in my Bible? So the Christian movement has taken different forms over 2,000 years, and from the beginning, all Christians recognized the Tanakh and the New Testament as scripture. And for centuries, much of the Second Temple literature was read as part of the biblical tradition. The Catholic Church eventually made it official and called some of the books from this collection the Deuterocanonical books. Some Orthodox churches used even more books from this Second Temple literature. And then in the 1500s, during the Reformation, Protestant Christians wanted to go back to the oldest writings of the prophets and apostles, so they accepted only the Old and New Testaments. Okay, I think I got it. But how does a collection of books produced over a thousand years by all these different authors tell one unified story? Yeah, that's the question we'll address in our next video. Hey, I'm John. And I'm Tim. This is The Bible Project. We believe the Bible is a unified story that leads to Jesus and has profound wisdom for the modern world. So we're creating videos to show that. This was the first in a brand new series that we're starting, How to Read the Bible, but uh, we have lots of other kinds of videos. You can find it all for free on our website at jointhebibleproject.com. In fact, there you can find a handout that will accompany this video. It just goes into more detail in the information that this video is about and lots of other resources, so check it out. You could also be a part of this by supporting us at thebibleproject.com. Our goal is to make all these resources available for free to anybody, anywhere, and we can do that because of your support. So thanks so much, you guys. Thanks. Now let me ask a question. Has anybody ever listened to a dope song? And when the song went off, you ask yourself, I wonder how old they are. I didn't oh, think so. They say you old good son, how you feel about it? I think I'm fresh as the prince, as Uncle Phil about it. Now everybody a rapper, let's be real about it. Some quitter fell off, but I'm still about it. Man, I'm still in the running on the double speaks. You can still see me coming in the double sneaks. I don't worship material, man, they only feed. If the Lord tell me to leave them, I'll be gone for weeks. There's a few in the arsenal that I have to keep. Blame it all on my flesh, y'all gotta pray for me. Man, I'm kidding my Jeep, don't even play with me. God versus stuff, you can get that junk away from me. Yeah, ain't worth a penny in the hand for me. Lord God, still number one, not Anthony. Anyway, I'm the worker, and he's still a boss. Still slick with the drip, just like Ricky Ross. Keep him clean in between, just like dental floss. Even if you had the ingredients, couldn't steal a sauce. Before you carry the torch, gotta count the cost. Love of God saved my life when I was sick and lost. Never thought he was slick, in came the cross. It was like a gun with a body that I had to toss. Even though I was guilty, help me save face. Even though I was filthy, Jesus took my place. That's why I'm happy to say I'm still in the race. It was nothing I done, it was amazing grace. I'm so grateful to God for turning on the lights. His love is better than praying hands and Twitter likes. Grand posts of Facebook, DM posts. Like the house is on fire, I want all smoke. It's not a joke, I can't choke, that ain't me. Can't do nothing else but respect it, cause I'm OG.
Thank you.